Hey guys, welcome back to class with Cass. Uh, if you don't know me, I am a second semester senior here at Yale University. Um, that means I am graduating this December, which is pretty much about a month away, uh, final days of the college journey. And so I thought it would be really fitting to actually go and visit virtually the admissions office and look at my application file. Now, this is something that students are allowed to do. You just send in a request via email and my person got back to me within a month. Um, and then the other day I found myself sitting on the Zoom with this person as she scrolled through what uh, my admissions officer wrote about me. Um, and so it was a really interesting experience and I want to kind of walk you guys through the things that I discovered in this video. So when you are viewing your admissions file, whether it is virtually or in person, you are not allowed to take any photos or have any electronic devices. The only thing you're allowed to have is basically a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. So I took meticulous notes in my notebook, which I will be walking us through. So the first like 18 pages of this very long PDF was essentially my application along with my biographical information, um, along with financial aid information, I believe. Uh, and there was also, I could see uh, one of my extracurricular uh, recommendations um, on there. My teacher recommendations were not on there because I believe I signed away my rights to view that. So that was not part of the, prop, the file. So it's really like the last two to three pages that have what you want to look at. Uh, the first thing I saw was my admissions officer's name. Now followed by that were a bunch of acronyms and a bunch of numbers, which I will reproduce here. Uh, so basically what you see, EC is stands for extracurriculars, um, T1, T2 are your teacher recommendations, and then CR is your counselor, your school's counselor recommendation. Um, what do these numbers mean? It's on a scale of one to seven, a seven being very, very strong, one being very, very weak. Um, and then you have an overall rating. Um, next to that, you see two plus. Um, what does that mean? It's on a scale of one to four, one being the highest. So, and then plus is like, you know, closer to, it's, it's a good thing. It's you're getting warmer. Um, so coming in at two plus, I was basically, I guess one away from the highest score I could achieve, which is a one. If you're curious about what extracurriculars got me a score of six out of seven, you can watch this video here. So below that first admissions officer's ratings, there is a second admissions officer. And this second admissions officer is not from within your region. Uh, it's someone from outside of your region, a second reader. So the, my second admissions officer gave me these scores. And the only difference from the first uh, to the second is that he gave my first teacher recommendation a six instead of a seven. Ultimately, overall score is very, very close. Um, overall, the overall rating was exactly the same, two plus. So one last thing about this section was that there was something uh, written basically that meant likely nomination, next to that a no, what does that mean? It means that I wasn't selected to receive a likely letter, which some of you guys know, it's basically a strategy that colleges use to tell students that, hey, we really like you before sending out the official, you're accepted letter in, uh, April or March. Uh, so basically you received this likely letter sometime over the winter. So the next thing that was on my application was basically just like paragraphs of text. The first paragraph was from my first reader who you remember is within my region. Uh, Notable that Malaysia was the first word that she wrote down. Um, yes, I was born in Malaysia and my Common App essay had a lot to do with um, sort of the experience of being a uh, first gen, first generation immigrant, like 1.5, I guess. Um, and so I guess she really liked that I brought sort of an international flair to Yale's campus. I don't know, but Malaysia was the first word. 
And then she listed a few of my other awards, um, such as uh, the Blank Theater, which is a, a, a theater company in Hollywood uh, that produced my work in high school. Uh, and she listed other national awards that you, know, you can find on my resume, my honors and achievements, that section. So what she tackled next in this paragraph you know, evaluating me was my three essays. The first one was my Common App essay. Uh, and her takeaway from that was poetry despite hardships of the English language. The second essay uh, I wrote is, and you can check that out here, Confronting Fears Through Playwriting. And she said that that was a well-written essay. And then my um, third essay, which is on the shorter side, it's like, which extracurricular do you want to do? And you can check that out here, is uh, she wrote Spying on Celebs, which if you have not seen those videos, highly encourage you, uh, you'll understand a little bit more by what she means. She also wrote in this section, uh, additional info on brag uh, should be seen. What does this mean? On your application, there is a portion to fill out additional information. Uh, I use that section to fully, more, more fully explain what it is that I do as a journalist and the things I have covered, the events that I've been to. Uh, that's what I use my additional info information section. And she wrote brag because it's true, it was a brag. That is what I use that section for. Um, for others, I know that uh, you might be using that section to explain some or, sort of some unusual circumstance in your life, in your family, in your school. That section really is uh, something that you only want to use if you really feel like it needs to be seen. And and for her, she felt that, yes, okay, my usage of this section was justified. She wrote, should be seen. What she tackled next in this paragraph were my teacher recommendations. So teacher one, T1, she wrote, um, AP Calc, uh, took it as a sophomore, she noted. Um, and my teacher had written that I am a standout and a top 1%, uh, which I think was really important to this admissions officer. Uh, top 1% math student, um, and apparently my teacher wrote something along the lines of decontextualize difficult math problems to uh, simple uh, chunks and uh, describe me as a balanced student uh, and that peers look up to me. And that is what my UP Calc teacher, um, Mrs. Conry, wrote for me. Um, love her from the bottom of my, my heart. And then my admissions officer wrote T2 for teacher recommendation number two, noted that it was my A-push teacher. This is Miss Bulick, who I love also from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Bulick wrote that I am uh, one of the most exceptional scholars. Top three was highlighted by my admissions officer. Um, noted that I am a powerful writer, uh, have something like historical empathy, flexibility in storytelling, uh, and that I see education as an adventure. So this next section, she took note of some updates that I sent in after my original application um, was due. So essentially after I sent in to Yale, uh, I found out that, you know, over the winter I had uh, won these awards or scholarships. So she noted that, yes, I was a young arts finalist. I was also a Jack Kent Cooke uh, finalist, a Coca-Cola finalist, um, all these different scholarships and awards that you can win. Then she evaluated um, a recommendation that is, you know, one of the, the optional ones. Um, so someone who isn't, you know, a teacher, uh, or it could be, but for me, I asked um, one of my dearest mentors. Uh, she is my, uh, she was my editor when I was a reporter, a kid reporter growing up. Um, and my officer rated her recommendation as a six. Again, that's six out of seven um, and noted that um, my editor, Tara, uh, described me as industrious, reliable, um, and sets a new bar for what is possible. And then my admissions officer ranked my alumni interview. So the alumni who interviewed me, um, this person's notes, uh, my officer ranked it as a five. Again, that's out of seven. Um, and wrote that according to my interviewer, I was easy, um, I believe, that says gentle, um, brings, oh, sorry, genuine, uh, brings unique voice to Yale, um, thoughtful and engaging. And so that was kind of what 
went into this paragraph that my admissions officer wrote. Um, at the end of the paragraph, it was a separate paragraph, very short, and it says, English and theater studies seems like the perfect fit. Let's get her to Yale. So yes, I did apply to, uh, with the intention of becoming a theater studies and English major. And I think that's pretty interesting that she highlighted that um, because you know, we sometimes we just choose like, okay, whatever, I'll just apply to this school through this major. Um, but I think she saw that it really aligned with my interests and my previous uh, career experience. And so she thought Yale was a great match for me. Um, I did not become theater studies and English double major. Uh, as some of you know, I am a theater studies and ethnicity, race and migration double major. Um, yeah. I mean, still excellent choices. I just got here and discovered that English was not for me. So that was my first admissions officer. My second one, who you remember, it reads outside of my region. Um, basically, a shorter paragraph. Um, he noted, you know, that I write plays, that I write poetry, that I was a lit mag, literature magazine um, editor in chief, which I was in my high school, student body president. He noted um, state that I went to state and world Hobie. What is Hobie? It is a leadership conference, and I talk about it in this video. Um, he noted that I interview celebs, uh, and then he wrote T1, so teacher recommendation number one, uh, highlighted that I was one of the 1% encountered in her career. Again, this, this um, theme of highlighting like top student basically pops up again here. Uh, he notes that again for my second teacher recommend recommendation that I am um, top tier uh, and one of the standouts um, and even noted writes at length for a standout. And I know what he means by this. It means that my my APUSH teacher uh, wrote a very long uh, recommendation letter for me. And so that's he's referring to the length. So the last part of this PDF um, were my alumni interview comments. Now, this one was really long. This was like about five paragraphs or so. And the reason is because, you know, this this piece of writing is the only thing that they are submitting to the admissions officers. They don't really have a conversation with the alumni, so they have to be kind of thorough in like capturing me on paper within these like five paragraphs. So that, that's why it's like longer than what the officers had written. So in this interview recap, um, my interviewer described me as bright, thoughtful, and engaging. Um, we, I guess, recently I had just gone on a writer's conference to DC. So I told her about it. Um, we, I talked a little bit about my editor-in-chief responsibilities. Um, she, I guess she asked me like, what are some of your favorite panels that you you, ta uh, you went to at the conference? And I, I have no memory of this, but apparently I talked about a panel that was um, I think I think uh, an a supposed to, to be an Asian panel, uh, but a, a lot of the writers on that panel were from South Asia, uh, and the panelists described themselves as like this panel isn't diverse enough, which I, I thought was really interesting. Um, and then we talked about my playwriting, and then I probably reeled off my typical spiel of. Um, you know, diversity and representation is my passion. Um, and then she quoted me here. She said that I said, art is all about empathy. And then we talked about my passion for reporting. And I guess I used the words like, I want to see myself as a watchdog for diversity, which is something that I had written in some of my other um, essays. Uh, and then one question that she asked me was, why not stay in SoCal? Like if my goal is to enter the entertainment industry, why not go to college uh, in, in LA? And my answer was, well, I want to ground my work in theory. Uh, I think that Yale would be the perfect place to learn sort of the context to the craft um, of storytelling. Uh, and I brought up how strong Yale theater is. Um, and that, yeah, there is this sort of supportive environment at Yale as opposed to competitive. It's more collaborative than anything. Talked about, you know, essentially, why do I want to go to Yale? I also talked about things that I wanted to participate in. Um, I talked about like literary magazines, joining the YDN, the Yale Daily News, uh, 
and possibly starting a playwrights festival, um, like a, a festival of one acts, which is funnily enough, like I didn't accomplish the other two, um, just because life has taken me in a different direction. Uh, but this festival I did put up, it was festival of my own works in sophomore year. And then in junior year, although this never went up, I, uh, because of COVID, um, I did start to put up like a one act festival for, for other playwrights, like new emerging playwrights. This next section is pretty interesting. Uh, she wrote, while her questions about Yale were somewhat generic, meaning that I asked questions like, what do you wish you knew? And your favorite part about Yale, which I guess my interviewer thought was, you know, generic questions. Um, she does show enthusiasm for expanding horizons and developing interests in the tight knit community like Yale. And then she wrote, overall, strong candidate, unique voice, would benefit from academic and professional resources. Um, the conversation was easy and genuine. Talk on representation and diversity was reflective and insightful. So that was like a lot of information that I just threw at you and that I kind of like absorbed through this like 30 minute Zoom meeting um, with the person who was not my admissions officer. She was just there to walk me through what this document means. So what was my experience overall? Um, I don't know. I, I just feel so like humbled in, in many ways. Um, I'm reminded of the amazing opportunities that God allowed me to experience throughout my high school years. Um, God granting me the desires of my heart to like cover all of my favorite, you know, movie premieres and, and press junkets and red carpets. Um, the opportunities that I got to, at my high school to discover creative writing, playwriting and poetry. Um, and all of those amazing leadership experiences that brought me to where I am today. So I don't know, there's something very sweet, nostalgic. I feel very, very, very grateful for my high school experience and especially to all my mentors, um, like my teachers in high school, especially my teachers and counselors and mentors who wrote my recommendations and spent a lot of time you know, like speaking really highly about me um, to, so that these admissions officers would have no doubt that I am a match for Yale. I also want to go over some of my biggest takeaways um, and things that kind of like surprise me about, I guess, how I am evaluated. Um, your teacher recommendations, I think, are like very important, um, probably more important than I realized, um, as well as your my counselor recommendation, because they they score you on that, right? Like each teacher recommendation, each counselor recommendation receives a score on its own. Um, the fact that my both admissions officers highlighted that my teachers said something along the lines of like top or like 1% or like top 3%, I think that says something about, you know, how students are evaluated. I think that the updates that I sent in after I submitted my original Yale application, like the fact that that was a consideration that was surprising to me. So yeah, if you get, you know, if you win stuff after you've hit submit, like do not forget to update your colleges about, you know, what you have won, um, even, you know, over, over winter break, essentially, like, these admissions officers, they are taking that into consideration. And then of course, the interview mattered, I guess on, on paper, like it looks like the interview matters a lot because there are like five paragraphs devoted to their experience talking to me, as opposed to like the two paragraphs um, that the admissions officers wrote down. But again, keep in mind, like, there was an entire conversation that I was not privy to uh, that happened in the admissions officer's room, um, but on paper, like the interview took up a giant chunk. I guess something else that surprised me too is that my questions to my interviewer were seen as generic, which maybe like maybe my interviewer had like a higher expectation for me because I'm a journalist and I'm supposed to ask really good questions. So maybe be creative. I don't know, this is hard, right? Because you don't know um, kind of like the, the experience or the background uh, that your interviewer had at Yale. Of course you can do some like LinkedIn sleuthing, but it's only gonna get you so far. Um, so you can try to like tailor your questions to uh, like, like let's say your interviewer wrote for the YDN and you want to write for the YDN, like something like that. Um, but I guess 
maybe go deeper than the questions I asked, which again were, what do you wish you knew when you entered Yale? And what's your favorite part about Yale? Yes, okay, on the surface, they are a little bit surface level, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I needed to come up with better questions, um, but don't stress out about it, honestly. I think the biggest takeaway, again, is that the interview, you know, they're really checking to see if you are a genuine person. Um, and something specifically to Yale is that, I don't know, all Yaleys that I've met have the ability to like talk, like you could, you could put two Yaleys in a room, give them a topic, and they could probably talk for like hours on end. Um, and so this ability to connect through conversation is really important for our school. Um, and yeah, so just, just be yourself, be genuine, be honest about why you wanna go to Yale. Make sure you don't blank on that question, be specific in your answers. Um, and I think if the conversation is easy and genuine and you connect with your interviewer, it's all, it's all good signs, very good signs. So that is all the information that I gathered. I shared everything with you. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching this video and supporting me all of these years. Um, I'm just grateful. You know, my, my, my heart is just overflowing. Oh my God, I'm like getting emotional, but basically, right? Like I am a month away from graduation. And it's been an incredible, incredible four and a half years here at Yale. Um, and never for one minute have I ever regretted my decision to choose Yale. So to my, to my admissions officers, to everyone who supported me and like brought me to where I am today and helped me in that journey, like I am so, so thankful and, and grateful to God and all these opportunities he provided. So I will catch you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.